Now at five, we are continuing to follow a drive-by shooting that happened in Pasco last night. Why police say there was and is no danger to the public. Plus, the fight continues for updated technology for the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. The new plea from the sheriff coming up. Also ahead, PNNL is working on new ways to conserve energy. We'll explain. Stacey. And a beautiful day outside. Look at that. Clear skies, not a lot of smoke and haze. 83 degrees. How long is this going to last? I'll have all the details in your first alert weather forecast. This is Apple Valley News Now at 5 on your side. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Austin Reed. We are continuing to follow a drive-by shooting that happened last night in Pasco. Cops say a juvenile was shot and injured, but is expected to survive. The shooting was first reported around 7 p.m. near the Circle K on Chapel Hill and Broadmoor Boulevard. Shortly after the shooting, officials said there was no threat or danger to the public. But some residents asked if this was a random shooting, why was there no threat to the public? So new tonight, we spoke with Pasco police over the phone to get a better idea as to why there was no threat. Yeah, so when we're putting out information that we don't believe that there's a specific threat to the public, um, what we're trying to convey is that we don't think that this is uh, a random event that is occurring um, to uninvolved persons. Um, so we're not concerned that um, there's an individual just going around attacking people at random. This was a specific isolated incident. Um, so we want people to understand that, that while there are dangers out there on the day-to-day -day community, this does not elevate um, our standard assessment of that risk. The suspect is still on the run. No final word just yet if this was gang related. Franklin County's emergency communication system is in trouble and it will be asking for an increase in funding on the November ballot. But why? Well, Leo Perales of the city of Pasco and the council tells us that the system is failing, which puts public safety in danger. Franklin County Sheriff Jim Raymond spoke at the Pasco City Council meeting last night about the dead zones in some areas of the county. And so what we do is we live day by day now, at least when you get north of the city, as, as our radio systems are going to work. And if I took you out on a drive, I'd get you to about Burr Canyon, and then you would see where there is no radio for law enforcement uh, in the 800 environment right now. It just goes dead. He also says that voting to support the tax will ensure that first responders have the resources they need to protect and serve the community. Turning to fire season 2024, the retreat fire has burned through over 45,000 acres southwest of Natchez and is currently at 70% containment. The fire is no longer burning alongside Highway 12, but the roadway remains closed. Firefighters are still using the highway as an access point for emergency vehicles and equipment. Wash dot crews also needing to assess damage to infrastructure before they can reopen the roadway. We've had uh, about 3,100 feet of guardrail that needs to re be replaced along that area, uh, as well as a dozen highway signs. Um, and all of those items were damaged from the retreat fire itself. Coming up new at six tonight, what you need to know about detour routes and how much it'll add to your travel time, depending on what kind of vehicle you are driving. The retreat fire has burned about 4,600 acres and is now 70% contained. U.S. Highway 12 is still closed between the Y of Highway 410 and the top of the harbor at mile marker 151. Turning to the Battle Mountain Compact complex fire. It has burned almost 183,000 acres. Tonight, it's 82% contained. Thanks to the high containment, some public lands will be opened back up later today. Some evacuation zones have been downgraded from level three to level two, and zone UMC 309 was downgraded from level two to level one. The cause of the fire still under investigation. It's estimated cost right around $64 million. Um, not not huge changes on the fire itself. Um, some some good info for everybody, but um, you know we, we do still pay attention and, and go patrol and make sure everything's tucked in here on the North Fork of the Owens fire. Uh, daily we have resources up there. No issues, no concerns, but we are checking up on that fire up there and uh, making sure it's all tucked in tight and it looks pretty good. For continuous updates on all of the wildfires burning across Oregon and Washington, head to our website, applevalleynewsnow.com.
Well, this morning's sudden change in our weather is helping our air quality. Take a look at this video we shot from Kennewick shortly after the noon hour today. Overnight lows dipped into the upper 50s and the days of 90 and 100 degree weather are no more, at least for this week. Most of the day we have been hanging out in the good air category and that looks to be the trend for the rest of the week. So let's get a first look at our forecast. Stacy Lee joining us from our first alert weather center. And wow, what a difference weather wise. Will this be the story for the rest of the week? It's looking pretty good. This is the best view we've seen in Yakima all week as far as smoke and haze. You see a little bit of that. And unfortunately, we're going to see that creeping back in. Uh, but the winds definitely push a lot of that smoke out of our area. It's pleasant this afternoon. 83 degrees. Winds are light at 10 or feels like temp 81. Temperature wise, this looks to be the trend at least for the next uh, seven days or so. Temperatures elsewhere around the region. Take a peek at Dayton and Pullman. Look at that. 23 degrees difference, not a big uh, vast area as far as uh, difference goes, but it's quite a bit cooler today than we were yesterday. Clee Ellum in the 60s, most of us down a few degrees, minus nine degrees from 24 hours ago. But look at Dayton, 21 degrees cooler than it was just 24 hours ago. Here's a quick sneak peek at the next three days headed into the weekend. Breezy conditions, like I said, the smoke and haze moving back in to the Yakima area, Tri-Cities area, uh, Walla Walla. You guys are going to stay free of smoke but you do have chances some thunderstorms on the way and Hermiston looking at some breezy hazy conditions. So just to recap, cool and hazy tonight, breezy to gusty winds in some areas. Some of us are going to finally calm down. Our below average temperatures continue into the weekend and we do have a chance of showers or thunderstorms. And I'll tell you exactly where and when that's going to happen. Austin. All right, Stacy, thank you. Turning to news about our environment, PNNL opened the doors to its newest research hub today. This is the grid storage launch pad. Officials say it's a milestone in taking steps to enhance energy infrastructure and improve the reliability of the power grid from development to testing, everything will be done under one roof. Gary Richman, the Undersecretary for Science and Innovation with the DOE, says research and work at the GSL starts a lot smaller than you might think. To get, the, get those batteries to work, we have to work on a molecular level at what's in those batteries, and that's what this place is really good at, in addition to taking not only what's going in, whether it's a salt or lithium, but also to be able to look at huge batteries and what's the chemistry and what's the what's the materials that got to go in there in order to make it work. Now this is a 93,000 square foot research facility housing 30 labs and employing around 100 researchers. Coming up tonight at 6, our Riley Fitzgerald will bring us the whole story from PNNL's brand new grid storage launch pad. Switching from energy storage to nuclear energy, tonight at the Richland Public Library, the B Reactor Museum Association is hosting a presentation on the lessons learned from the failure of tank 241A-105. Built in 1955, it was meant to hold 1 million gallons of liquid waste. Rick Raymond, a longtime Hanford employee, will talk about what exactly led up to the techno, uh, technological and chemical issues that led up to the unexpected failure of the tanks and its subsequent leaks. This is all part of a series of presentations from the B Reactor Museum Association. And we will be doing other presentations in the future. There's some works going on for special events going on in September, because September will be the 80th anniversary of the startup of the B Reactor. Now, this event is happening tonight at 7 o'clock. It is, again, at the Richland Public Library with Rick Raymond presenting, who will also be open to all sorts of Hanford-related questions. We are continuing the coverage on a Cadillac strike that could be coming up very soon. The strike comes after an eight month long failed employee negotiation contract. The strike is set to start next Tuesday and last about a week. Apple Valley News now spoke with Cadillac employees and they say the strike is all about being treated fairly. We feel like we're just being kind of pushed around like we're not as good we don't need to be treated the same uh, like I said we all do the same work we all have the same goal it would just be nice to be treated as such. Cadillac Hospital officials say both parties would return to the negotiating table once the strike is over. 
And finally, in your first few minutes of news here at 5, Apple Valley News Now's restaurant showdown started over a month ago now with 64 restaurants. After almost 6,000 votes, we are now down to the final four. They are the Second Street Grill, Anthony's, the Maple Counter Cafe, and the Prosser House. To vote for your favorite, just scan the QR code on your screen right now or click on contests at applevalleynewsnow.com and select Restaurant Showdown. After voting, be sure to enter to win a $25 gift card from STCU. And with that, the News at 5 is just getting started. Still ahead, realtors are bracing for the biggest shakeup to their business in decades. We'll explain. Plus, we have new details about how ARPA funding will help uplift both the MLK Center and the Boys and Girls Club of Pasco. And as we leave you to break, here's a live picture of the conditions outside. Speaking of Pasco, Right now, live shot from our Dust Devil Skycam. 83 degrees just last week. We were much warmer than that. Stacy Lee has your full first alert forecast when we come back. Take a look at. What do you think? So here. From design and products to removal and installation, Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit rebath.com and save $500 off your tub or shower remodel. The Make It Ford Summer Sales Event is on. I want that. Amazing offers on the best-selling trucks in America for 47 years. Don't wait. Get the deal you can't miss. Lease a 2024 F-150 STX Super Crew for just $3.99 a month. Only at your local Ford dealer. Every day, we do things to ensure we are prepared for whatever comes our way. For veterans who use opioids or stimulants or pills that might be laced with opioids like fentanyl, use comes with risk of deadly overdose. So being ready means having naloxone on hand. If you are a veteran who uses opioids, now is the time to prepare. Naloxone is a free opioid overdose medication that comes as a nasal spray or injectable and can reverse an opioid overdose. Knowing how to use naloxone could save a life. Talk to your provider to learn more. Throw away your distance and reading glasses. Join Drs. Kopstein and King for a free live webinar August 22nd and find out if RLE is right for you. K2 Vision RLE. No readers, glasses, contacts, or cataracts. Phones were made to help us connect, yet somehow they've made us less connected. Which is ironic, don't you think? We try to put our phones down, but we need to pick them up to see the menu. We can't watch something without also watching something else. Ironic. Ironic. Huh? ironic. But look, here's a phone company who wants you to use your phone less. That's ironic. Yeah, but in a good way. Let's find us again with us mode. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Traffic jam. Ugh. And I'm already late. The White Card, a powerful resource for former Hanford and DUE employees. If you worked in the area and have come down with cancer, lung disease, Parkinson's, or renal failure, you may be eligible for financial compensation and health care services. A simple phone call can get the process started. Atomic Home Health. Don't wait. Call today. The Make It Ford Summer Sales Event is on. I want that. Amazing offers, like the Built Wild Bronco family. Get the deal you can't miss. Lease a 2024 Bronco Sport Big Ben for just $369 a month, only at your local Ford dealer. So what do you think about these? We're going to take everything. From out. design and products to removal and installation, Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $1,000 off your complete bathroom remodel. Round 5 voting is now open. Click contests at AppleValleyNewsNow.com. Welcome back to Apple Valley News Now Live at 5. One of the driving factors behind the petition to recall the Mabton mayor is that the city continues to operate without a budget eight months into the year. One item listed on the agenda for tonight's regular meeting under old business is an update on the 2023 budget. It is still unclear if any progress has been made on the 2024 budget. Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell will be at that meeting tonight, and we will have an update for you tomorrow on Apple Valley News Now's Good Morning Northwest. That is from 5 until 7 a.m., so stay with us. Following up on how the City of Pasco allocated American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds, well, Apple Valley News Now spoke with a City of Pasco official, and she says the ARPA funding is being used to help both the Boys and Girls Club of Benton and Franklin Counties and the clubhouse in Pasco at the MLK Center. It's not that we're focusing on Boys and Girls Club and now just leaving MLK Center in the dust. They've still got 
over $2 million in ARPA funding that's been set aside for their project. The renovation plans are still moving forward, um, and we're still looking to put more investment into that. Coming up later tonight, you will be able to hear from a Boys and Girls Club official about how the ARPA funding will help them and what else the city is planning to do to aid the MLK Center. Turning now to a consumer alert. Realtors are bracing for the biggest shakeup to their business in decades this week, and home buyers need to prepare as well. On Saturday, new rules are set to upend the long-standing process around who pays real estate agents and how much. Karen Kafa is in Washington with a look at how some home buyers are preparing. New rules for realtors will eliminate the long-standing 6% commission paid by a home seller and potentially lower overall home prices. For a century, the industry has essentially set commission rates. The changes effective this Saturday, August 17th, are part of a settlement announced in March by the National Association of Realtors. For decades, a seller's agent typically charged the seller 5 or 6 percent of a home's purchase price intended to be shared with the buyer's agent. That puts sellers on the hook for an additional cost some experts say inflated home prices. Now sellers will no longer be expected to make commission offers to buyer agents. Vanessa Perry, interim dean of the George Washington University School of Business, says the new rules provide more transparency, but don't necessarily simplify the process. Increased transparency does not mean increased understanding. Additionally, home buyers will have to sign a representation agreement with an agent before even touring a home, which could be challenging for less experienced buyers. They're trying to navigate an already complex set of transactions, maybe the biggest transaction they'll ever engage in in their lives. That's why Steve Robeck of the Consumer Federation of America says it's more important than ever to find an agent who knows the new landscape. Consumers talking to agents who don't really understand the new marketplace need to find another agent. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. And if you are a local realtor, please contact us at news at applevalleynewsnow.com and let us know how this will be impacting you. All right, turning to our weather, Tropical Storm Ernesto is now strengthening as it slammed the Northern Caribbean with heavy rain, gusty winds, and rough seas today. Take a look at this video. Hurricane watches were issued late Tuesday morning for the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Also in Colabera, the National Hurricane Center cautioned that Ernesto could be near or at hurricane strength in about 24 hours. The storm's sustained winds increased by 10 miles an hour over six hours just this morning to 50 miles per hour. Now, Ernesto could become a hurricane early Wednesday as it tracks just north of Puerto Rico. Now, it was previously forecast to reach hurricane strength winds later in the day by tomorrow, and we'll keep you posted on that. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Stacy Lee. And I don't know about you, but I feel like this is the June and July we didn't get. And here it is mid-August and it's beautiful this evening. Uh, there's the big boat in uh, port over here at the Howard Amon uh, launch area. 83 degrees right now. Winds are light at 11 miles per hour. They'll start to decrease a little bit overnight. Humidity 24%. So beautiful day. Now the good news is we've been in the green, meaning good air quality all day. But we're going to start seeing that smoke creep back in as we're starting to see moderate air and some of that haze sitting in the Prosser area that will continue to move. And this has been our clear air that we've been seeing this big, nice pocket all day. But look what's going on. The winds are going to shift again and we're going to start to see that smoke head to the east, moving right into the lower valley, into the Tri-Cities, Columbia Basin area, Hermiston, Pendleton. Again, it's going to be pretty much the haze we've been seeing the last couple of days shouldn't impact air quality too much. But there still is an air quality alert for the Yakima Valley once again due to the retreat fire that we've been dealing with and some of the other fires in our area. Let's take a look at our weather track. What's going on for Wednesday an upper level system again coming in from the coast from west to east and that's going to allow moisture along the system aiding in showers through the center part of our area. Here's that big heat dome starting to build once again down uh, of course down south of Omaha Dallas area Albuquerque another nice big heat wave there monsoonal moisture in the uh, desert center 
southwest. For us, though, we're in between two jet streams here. That's allowing the cool air still to drive on down from the north, but we're seeing a little bit of a disturbance coming up from California. It's going to move right through the center of Oregon into our area, so we could see some rain showers in the Wallawas, maybe in those southern portion of the blues in Oregon, and then it should track up and maybe bring a few sprinkles to our area. Not a substantial amount of rain, but it's needed, and uh, this is what future cash shows us going forward. Most of the clouds moving out. This is what it looks like tomorrow morning. Should be a beautiful day, a little on the cool side. It's kind of getting that vibe of like fall, but then here comes that next system moving up from the south uh, late Wednesday night, Thursday morning, it'll hit the Hepner area, and then we could see a few showers slide into the Tri-Cities Walla Walla area, but that's what it's looking like so far. Now, tonight's going to be cool again. Again, the smoke and haze starting to linger and move back into our area. Most of us down into the 50 degree temperatures. Walla Walla 55 tonight, Pendleton 49, 56 Tri-Cities, 56 in Yakima. For tomorrow, look for hazy in the morning. That should clear out, bringing us sunshine and temps in the 80s for the Yakima. Kittitas Valley into the Columbia Basin, Tri-Cities, all of us in the mid and upper 80s, so just a few degrees warmer than we were today, and temperatures along the foothills of the Blues in the middle 80s as well. Temperature trends again going down just slightly below our average for this time of year, and that is what we're looking like. Here's your seven-day planner for Ellensburg. Gusty winds, chance of showers or thunder showers, uh, potentially Friday, Saturday, more likely there. Yakima, very slight chance of some stray showers, hazy and breezy easy for tomorrow. Tri-Cities, we're looking at temperatures in the 80s, climbing back into the lower 90s, right about average, but staying below average for the next couple of days. Looking at Hermiston, we'll see temps in the 80s, climbing back into the 90s, still below our average for this time of year. And then in Walla Walla, look at those 80s, a slight hit in the 90s, and this is where we'll see a better chance of some isolated thunder showers Thursday and Friday in the area. So pretty good forecast going forward. Like I said, I feel like this is that June and July that it was so hot. Well, we're getting it in August. So, all right, still to come, our viewer photo of the day. Austin. All right, Stacey, thank you. And she'll join me here at the desk because the spotlight is next and we are headed to Sunnyside. Stay tuned. Boating, fishing, and good times. Fly the Northwest. Apple Valley News now at 6 tonight. So sorry, Jack, about the mess that Big Yellow and I made. Yeah, is there, is there any way that I can uh, make it up to you? Or? Actually, you could help me promote my new $5 big deal meal. You think I could be bought, you son of a... Hello. This is only showing in Japan, right? If you're hurt at work, your life can go into a downward spiral. You're injured. You can't work. Your bills are piling up. But winning workers' comp benefits isn't easy. You're the underdog. We'll fight labor and industries to get you the workers' compensation benefits you deserve. If you were hurt at work, let us go to work to get you benefits. Call 509-584-4411 for a free consultation. Bothwell and Hamill. Visit Fred's Appliance today and explore unbeatable deals. Step up to the all-in-one GE Profile laundry machine for just $21.98. It combines both washer and dryer functions into one sleek appliance, saving space and offering unmatched convenience. Automatically dispenses the right amount of detergent each load, and Wi-Fi connectivity allows you to control and monitor your laundry from anywhere, saving you time and effort. At Fred's, we sell appliances, only appliances. Chevy lets you begin every day fully charged. So you can go farther. And so can your money. Tow with confidence. Plus, stay connected with available OnStar technology. For summer adventures, Chevy's got you. Get 5750 total value on this Silverado LT when you trade in an eligible vehicle. That's 10% below MSRP. See your community Chevy dealers. Power your adventures with the all-electric 2024 Subaru Solterra. It comes with legendary Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive, standard, plus a rugged 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Everything about the Subaru Solterra is advanced, including the technology keeping you and your passengers safe. Love is now electric. Find your way home in a new Subaru Solterra from McCurley Subaru during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. 
next ET, only here in Atlanta on tour with Usher. A lot of moments, a lot of dance, a lot of energy. Plus, we're hitting the town with Halle Berry, Mark Wahlberg, and Vince Vaughn. Next ET, tonight at 7 on Apple Valley News Now. Everyone's favorite curly fries, one of my famous tacos, a drink, and your choice of sandwich, all for five bucks. Grab my big deal meal and go see Marvel Studios' Deadpool and Wolverine in theaters July 26th. Welcome to Jack in the Box. Every night around this time, we have the spotlight. That's right. And we're headed to Sunnyside, where a local musician is set to perform tomorrow. And here's a quick sneak peek. Hey everybody, this is Lena Lee Music. I'm going to be in Sunnyside on Wednesday, August 14th from 6 to 8 p.m. in Centennial Park to play some music for you guys. City of Sunnyside is looking at having some vendors and some food there available, so we should have some beautiful weather, not too hot. And here's another look at some other performances that she's going to have kind of going through the rest of this summer. So check it out if you're in Sunnyside. I liked her invite and just uh, for the record, Lena Lee, not related. Not, not related to you. <laughs> All right, final weather is next. <laughs> Smoke City for Less. We are open seven days a week with now five locations. There was a time when you could get a complete meal for just $5, but you gotta go way back. Well, just a Tuesday. Yes, Tuesdays at AW, single Papa Burger combos complete with fries and a root beer cost just five bucks. This all time great deal is available Tuesdays only at AW. Poor maintenance, old tires, bad brakes, that could be why the big truck hit you. Hit by a big truck? I know how to beat their insurance companies. I'm attorney Mariana Morales, the big truck heavy hit. Call 853-2222. Enjoy bowling here at Triple Play, where fun is always in season. French fries are fun, which is always in season here at Triple Play. Speaking of fun, did you know it's always in season at Triple Play? Dude, what's with dropping the tagline? The marketing ladies wanted me to push it. What did they offer you? Five pizzas. Gonna share, right? Of course. Triple Play has fun attractions for everyone, including go-karts, mini golf, and many more, all attached to a cozy hotel. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'd started abusing the oxycodones that I'd been prescribed. I was pretty uncontrollable. I knew that the drugs and the alcohol had taken a toll on me, and I knew the whole time that I wanted to make changes. I just didn't know how to make them. It was a blessing that I went into rehab, and that's how I got my life back on track. I didn't get sober on my own. I had a group of people. Watch more stories and find resources about substance use disorder at maketheconnection.net slash substance use disorder. I have two options for you to take a look at. When it's time for an update or a complete remodel. Just watch yourself there. So here, guys, we're gonna rip everything down to the stud. Rebap is with you every step of the way, from design and products to removal and installation. Okay, what do you guys think? We handle the entire process right. to create a beautiful and functional bathroom for whatever your life needs. <laughs> Rebath, with you every step of the way. Call us or visit rebath.com and save $1,000 off your complete bathroom remodel. Poor maintenance, old tires, bad brakes, that could be why the big truck hit you. Hit by a big truck? I know how to beat their insurance companies. I'm attorney Mariana Morales, the big truck heavy hit. Call 853-2222. KFC's fan favorite country fried steak is just $5.99 every Wednesday. It's a complete meal with your favorite sides. Best of all, it's just $5.99. Yay! Country fried steak, $5.99 Wednesdays only at KFC. An awesome flight over a lakeside community in northern Idaho. We have the beautiful lake right here, the bike trail, amazing businesses. Harrison. We have some of the most beautiful sunsets you'll ever see in your lifetime. Fly the Northwest. Apple Valley News Now at 6 tonight. Superstar Martina McBride. The Demolition Derby. The PRCA Rodeo. All part of the 2024 Walla Walla Fair and Frontier Days. Let freedom your chance to win tickets to the fair, scan this QR code or click contest at applevalleynewsnow.com. 
and come take a look at your screen viewer photo of the day. If you look oh. way down, you can see that that paddle boat that's always in Richland. It's coming through the locks there at the John Day oh, yes. uh, area. Kind of cool, huh? It is. All yeah. right, let's take a look at our forecast for tonight in our big cities, Ellensburg through Walla Walla. 50s going to kind of feel fallish. And then for tomorrow, look for sunny skies, slightly warmer temperatures, but beautiful weather all the way around. And unfortunately, guys, a little bit of smoke and haze developing once again tonight and tomorrow morning. So. Oh. All right, thank you, Stacy. Thanks for joining us here at five. World News Tonight is next. Hoping your news is good news. We're back at six. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>